Hey viewers, real quick, wanted to say this was recorded from my Twitch, so if there are any spots of lag, that's probably why. Otherwise, thanks for watching my first ever Let's Play, and I hope you enjoy the video. Welcome, everybody, to a 112% playthrough of my favorite game of all time, Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight released in 2017, and it got constant content updates for well over a year. Um, and it has become one of the most popular metroidvanias out there and i hope that with this playthrough i can show you why um, i'm going to be going into a lot of details with this game from uh, small speed running strats that i've managed to pull off or um, just like little development secrets that sort of thing i want to be as comprehensive as possible just to give this game its uh give it its due So let's begin. In wilds beyond, they speak your name with reverence and regret. For none could tame our savage souls, yet you the challenge met. Under palest watch you taught we change, base instincts were redeemed. A world you gave to bug and beast, as they had never dreamed. From Elegy for Hallownest by Monomon the Teacher. Subtle flex, I did that blindfolded because I I know that poem like the back of my hand at this point. Just as some little uh, technical notes here, if anybody is curious, I am playing using a Switch Pro controller on Steam. Not because of any benefits the controller itself has, it's just that's what I'm most familiar with since the Switch is where I first played Hollow Knight. And here we are introduced to ourselves. And so, thus we begin our adventure. We are this little bug friend here. Um, he does not have a name. He just simply goes by the knight. And, uh, or, you know, the, the pale thing. Whatever you want to call it, honestly. Um, and I do not have my controls set up properly. <laughs> Hold on a second. All right, sorry about that. We're back. Um, so we have a very basic moveset right from the start. We can move left and right, we can jump, and we have our little our little stick here to swing at things. The environment is actually remarkably interactable. Uh, you can cut all this grass, you can cut some of the stones around here. Um, the amount of detail in this game, I don't know if you noticed, but in the bottom right, only about three or four names popped up. Um, yeah, this game, when it was originally created, started with a team of two um, and the composer. And it's one of the most well-developed games I've ever seen. And the fact that it was made by such a small team is kind of remarkable. So we're just going to continue on here to the right and meet our first enemy. He lives. Um, <laughs> So these guys are just not threats at all. They don't really do anything except scuttle back and forth. Um, and, you know, you take two hits to kill, drop a little bit of money. Money in this game can be found in a variety of places. Most of it is going to come from enemies and uh, rocks like the one you just saw. Money in this game is called Geo. So Geo is going to become very important later on. Right now, game just started. Don't really have a lot to do with it. All right, here we go. <laughs> First speedrunning strat. 
I probably will fail just because that's my luck. And this is barely a speedrunning strat at all. Oh my god, I'm so good. Dude, 10 out of 10. Best game ever. Higher beings, these words are for you alone. Your great strength marks you amongst us. Focus your soul and you shall achieve feats of which others can only dream. Collect soul by striking enemies and once enough soul is collected, hold A to focus soul and heal. So, as you see in the top left, we have our little HUD. That's all the HUD will ever be. Um, we have five health and our little soul container on the left and then our geo counter. As you'll notice, as I fight this little fly here, each time I hit him, we got a little bit more soul. If I were to take damage, say from jumping on a pit of spikes, I lose one health. And then I hold down the soul button to recharge it. We use up some of our soul and we're back to full health. Managing soul is probably like one of the most um, most interesting aspects of this game because soul gets used for other things later on that we will see. But for right now, it's just used for healing. I failed there. I was trying to make that stalactite kill that bug by falling on him, but I timed it very poorly and I call myself a fan. So right up here, we're gonna get introduced to these lifeblood cocoons. Just kind of smack it, these little seeds pop out, and we get some temporary health. So, like I said, it's temporary. You get hit once, it just disappears. Uh, you can't heal it back up even with soul. And here's a little tip for you first time players. When you walk past this spike here, immediately hold left. And you can get into this little nook here. This gives you a little bit more money early on. You don't have to worry about it later on. So as we continue through this area, I'm just going to be going through. This area is very linear as it's the start of the game. You're just trying to get to the end. Knock this out a little bit. And here we've made it. Higher beings, these words are for you alone. Beyond this point, you enter the land of king and creator. Step across this threshold and obey our laws. Bear witness to the last and only civilization, the eternal kingdom, Hallow Nest. So if you noticed earlier when I was hitting enemies, the knight actually takes a little bit of knockback anytime he hits an object. You can see it against this door as well. Uh, if you want to avoid getting knocked back because maybe you're on the edge near that you don't want to fall off or something, you can always swing up and that will never do knockback for you. Here's the first piece of game design that I think is like amazing at simply telling you what to do. If we look down, you can't see anything. And so you're like, okay, well, only thing I can do is jump. And it's subtle, but that teaches you that this game doesn't have fall damage. And so it's like little details like that throughout this game that I think are truly incredible at teaching the player how to uh, better understand the world they're being thrust into. Oh, there, Traveler. I'm afraid there's only me left to offer welcome. Our town's fallen quiet, you see. The other residents, they've all disappeared, headed down that well, one by one, into the caverns below. Used to be there was a great kingdom beneath our town. It's long fell to ruin, yet it still draws folks to its depths. Well, for glory and enlightenment, that darkness seems to promise all things. I'm sure you too seek your dreams down there. But watch out. It's a sickly air that fills the place. Creatures turn mad and travelers are robbed of their memories. Perhaps dreams aren't such a great thing after all. Many used to come, hoping the kingdom would fulfill their desires. Hollow Nest, it was once called. Supposedly the greatest kingdom there ever was. Full of treasures and secrets. Hmm. Now it's nothing more than a poisonous tomb full of monsters and madness. Everything fades eventually, I suppose. Feeling tired? That bench may be iron, but I assure you it's quite comfortable. There's no better place to collect your thoughts before heading below. Plus, I enjoy the company. Not that you seem the talkative sort. 
Yeah, I don't really have a mouth for that, so sorry. Um, benches. If you have played Dark Souls before, these basically function as campfires. Yes, I know. I said I said the word. It, it, it's a Dark Souls Souls like game. God forbid. Um, sit at a bench. I actually didn't mean to do that because I forgot it erases temporary health mass. Uh, it's fine. If you're low on health, sitting at a bench completely refills it. And if you die, you will be sent back to the last bench you sat on. So we continue through here. For all your mapping supplies, we'll be opening soon. Zelda and Cornifer. Well, there's nowhere else to really go. Let's go. Welcome to the first area of the game, Forgotten Crossroads. So, Hollow Knight, as most Metroidvanias are, is a very massive game, and this is just one of, of plentitude, plentitude? I think that's a word, of areas. And um, this one is the smallest, or like one of the smallest at the very least, um, and we're going to we're going to see uh, a good chunk of it today. I'm being told plentitude isn't a word, so I'm, I'm very sorry. I'm also sorry for this guy. He seems very sad and it breaks my heart. I hope I can help you. I'm now being told that being told I was wrong is wrong. So, <laughs> plentitude might be a word. I don't know. And that's how you fall down a column without getting hit. <laughs> <laughs> hello. Oh, hello there. Come down to explore these beautiful old ruins. Don't mind me. I have a fondness for exploring myself. Getting lost and finding your way again is a pleasure like no other. We're exquisitely lucky, you and I. I'm a cartographer by trade, and I'm working on mapping this area right now. Would you like to buy a copy of my work so far? He's gonna sell this map for 30 Geo. We have no reason to take it, might as well. I just said we have no reason to take it. We have no reason to not take it. God damn. <laughs> A map can be a useful thing, but it alone won't show you where you are. If you're not the head for directions, I suggest purchasing a compass from my wife, Zelda. She's just now opening our new shop in Dirtmouth, selling all sorts of useful things to wanderers like yourself. She'll even sell some of my old maps from time to time. I pop back to see her whenever I finish mapping an area. She's always so excited to see me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, by the way, I haven't introduced myself, have I? Yes, I should apologize for that. When you spend a lot of time by yourself with just your own thoughts, you forget the niceties of conversation. My name is Cornifer, and I've always loved exploring the world. Why, when I first hatched, I wandered off immediately, leaving my brothers and sisters and poor mother behind. That's why, as soon as I could, I moved to Dirtmouth with my wife. A huge, unending kingdom to explore right on our doorstep. Who could resist? Anyway, I'll let you return to your travels. With a little luck, we'll meet again. Be safe and farewell. <laughs> so, here's a point of contention, I guess you could say, for new players to Hollow Knight, uh, and that would be the map. It's not very good. <laughs> you can see where we entered down the well, and you can see where we are now in the bottom left with uh, Cornifer's little face drawn on there. But aside from that, there's not a lot of detail. A lot of the uh, corridors seem to lead to nothing, and we ourselves don't even appear on the map. So, a lot of people who first show up to this game are a little turned off by um, the, the, I guess, forced exploration from that uh, and not and getting lost. But the thing about that is that Hollow Knight is a game that wants you to get lost in it. Um, the world is so massive and there are secrets around every corner that getting lost in this game is half of the magic of it, I think. 
So, I don't know if you noticed earlier, but you can swing your nail up and down. And when you swing it down, you can actually use it to bounce off uh, certain enemies and spikes even. So like down here. And so you can use that to get up here. This is just the first little bit of movement in this game that just feels, I got hit, so fluid. Um, and we're going to see a lot more as the game progresses, trust me. End of run. <laughs> I did I did jump on spikes earlier. So that that would have been the end of the glass soul run. Over here. Hi. Bye. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Hi. Oh my god. Dude, I've played this game like 6 times. They're still so cute. I can't get over it. So we can't do anything else in this room, so we're just gonna continue the other way. If you're turned off uh, right away by the, the relative bleakness of this game, uh, I implore you to stick around because this is, just, like I said before, this is just one area, and the you know the bleakness doesn't necessarily go away. But the, the color palette and the art direction that this game takes throughout is truly wonderful to look at. And it's not just the muted grays and blues of this area. All right, another great game design moment from Team Cherry. We see a rock over here that we can hit. Something about that hit felt a little wonky. So there's actually a secret wall here. And you find that because of hitting this rock. So they put that there expressly to show you that there are, you know, walls that you can break in this game and secrets to find along those lines. Uh, yeah, we can go in here first. All right. This is a hot spring. Um, I can't really make the best use of it now because I am uninjured. But sitting in a hot spring will refuel your entire health and um, if you stay in it for a while, uh, build up uh, your soul meter to full again. So hot springs, they're not very uh, common throughout the game, but if you find one, make sure to stop by it. They always have a bench as well, so you can always save your progress. And here we have a little bit of a, a mini dungeon area. I jumped into it. Again. Oh, you're alive. I'm making this look way harder than it is, because I tried to do a cool thing before, but it failed miserably. <laughs> um, a speedrunning strat to get through this room is um, once that second wave of those two enemies spawn in, you come up here, this stalactite falls, and you can hit it, and it'll shoot at like a diagonal angle, and it can kill both of them in one hit, so quick way to get through that room. Nothing really much for us in here except for some geo. I recommend picking up as much geo as you can come across in these initial areas, because there are some uh, interesting perks back up in Dirtmouth. Um, that we're going to want to check out soon. I have to keep this in mind too, because we can't do anything about reaching that yet. Why are you back? How rude. He encourages you to pick up money and then you he immediately leaves behind like 5G. It's fine. Don't worry about it. So, you can hear this little thing glowing up here, can't really do anything about it now. Just another piece of, uh, you know, typical Metroidvania fare. You see something, make note of it, you want to come back to it later when you have um, a little more equipment to deal with certain types of problems. This rock sucks, because the Geo really tends to fall down in that hole where that guy is. Luckily, I got lucky. Hooray. Go me. 
This is my least favorite room in the game, and it's for a very stupid reason. This feels like there should be something up here, right? Like, I'm not crazy. Like, why is this here? It just has two of, like, the weakest enemies in the game. There's no secrets up here. Nothing you can do later in the game. There's literally nothing here. And it's, like, the only time in this game where something feels, like, wrong to be, to be empty like that. <laughs> That timing. Yeah. Yeah. So, we could go explore uh, down to the left, we could go down to the right, or we could go up. I am opting to go to the right, I think. Sounds good to me. These old guys, they just hop back and forth in a pretty predictable arc. Uh, not, not too bad to deal with. Up here we have... Uh, I don't know what these are called. I played this game like seven times and I don't know what this is called. Uh, but all I know is that you whack it a couple times, you get soul out of it. That's all, that's all you need to know. I'm gonna call it a soul cache, because, you know, self-explanatory. I went into this, uh, playthrough with the mindset that I would play, like, somebody who's never touched the game before. Um, which is a little difficult, because I don't think most people would do this right away but um yeah screw it why not boss fight time so uh this is the gruz mother <laughs> this is one of if not the easiest bosses in the game um but just because i say that again keep in mind i do have a lot of experience with this game if you play it and the Gruz Mother, you know, does you in, it's totally normal. Um, this whole game, uh, all of its fights have learning curves and, you know, getting used to the Gruz Mother's simple attacks of just bouncing around the room, uh, you know, that's a learning curve in its own way. Kill the... Kill the spawn that come out of her gross stomach. It's fine. Ow. Okay, we're fine. And then you want to come down here for this room. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, oh, oh you off. You wield your nail like a club. Yes, me. How much deeper do we have to go? Oh, oh. what? Oh. Who are you? I see. This old village. What a strange dream to have led me down here. If you hadn't found me, I don't think I would have ever woken. I'm Sly. Usually, I live an uneventful life up in Dirtmouth. The air in these ruins doesn't agree with me, so I'd best be getting back. If you return above, come and see me. I'm probably the friendliest face there, and I can thank you properly for your good deed. You're exploring, then. Very brave. Plenty of courageous wanderers have been lost to the hunger of these old caverns. You have your nail, though, and I can tell just by looking that you know how to wield it. Thanks, Sly. I'm actually going to head back the way we came and take the upper path this time. I think we're at a relatively good stopping point for this first episode. I do want to get a little bit more money though. Um, I want to get about, I think, 390 is what I want. Oh, why am I going this way? Uh, 
I don't know how, but those things always hit you. It's, it gets worse. Trust me, anyone who's played this game later on knows exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, that uh, grub that we saved earlier, you know, you can hear another one right now. Um, you know, if you hear a grub in a room, obviously there is always a grub nearby. So, um, you know, even if it might not be extremely evident, you know, if you hear a grub, make sure you explore for areas like this. God dang. You make my life happy. Continue on up. Um, uh, where can we get a little bit more money? Actually, I think we should be fine to just head back from here. I tried to hit the stalactite into him and I totally failed. Oh, you know what? This isn't actually the path I wanted to take, but we can, okay, this, this works. I, I know where I'll go from here. Okay, sure, that's fine. Ah, yes, this. I hope I don't screw this up. So, kind of like that ledge that we saw earlier. You know, right now you're not really supposed to be able to do anything about that grub, but you can exploit the game if you try hard enough. Ugh, I need him over here. Come on. Oh, no. Okay, hold on. There we go. Hell yeah, there we go. Okay. Right. I love doing that. I love breaking this game in the best of ways. Give <laughs> give the grub a kiss. <laughs> ah, 420. Oh. We were at the funny internet number. Uh, we can show this off really quick. Now that we've saved a couple grubs. Why do I keep getting hit to these basic enemies? All right, yeah. Now that we've saved a couple grubs, let's head back to this room. Ooh. Hey, he's not crying anymore. Oh. <laughs> Whee. Whee. <laughs> so every time you rescue a grub, um, or not every time, but when you get like a group of grubs saved, I recommend coming back here. This guy gives out some seriously good rewards for saving his children? Question mark? All right. Now we can head back up finally. So there was another thing that I was going to show, but uh, I think it's a good place as any to stop. So I thank you for joining me on this first episode of this full complete playthrough of Hollow Knight asterisk. A <laughs> I'll explain the asterisk later. Uh, but for now, again, I thank you. And until next time, stay happy, healthy, and kind.